Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I am so excited. I have been meaning to film this very video for quite some time. In fact, I did actually film it once already and I hated the way my makeup looked in it. So ended up scrapping the whole thing. Nonetheless, here we are. We are going to be talking about brands that just don't excite me. They don't butter my bread. They don't butter my muffin. I'm just not into it. Now that doesn't mean that they haven't created or currently have products that I love or have loved. That's not what this is about. These are just brands that I feel like just aren't keeping up with things. They aren't keeping up with the trends. They're not coming out with really anything very fun or innovative. I'm also going to be talking about brands that are doing it right. Brands that just appeal to me, that are nailing it, and are just doing something that just works. So we're going to touch on all of that. Now remember, if I mention a brand that you absolutely love, and you're probably thinking, er, that crystal, I can't believe that she would actually say that about my favorite brand. Makeup is a personal thing. How I feel about something may be completely opposite to you. This is just opinion. Like I said, it doesn't mean that these brands haven't or currently have products that I enjoy. I just want to put that disclaimer out there. I don't want anybody getting all sensitive about it. These are just my personal thoughts that I feel like sharing with you guys. So let's dive into it. I have all of of these different brands with my thoughts right here on my phone. So of course, if you see me looking down, it's because I am viewing my notes. Now, before I even get started, I want you guys to take a stab at what brand you think I'm going to talk about first. I feel like most of you can guess this. Let's talk about Mac. Now, back in the day, Mac was everything. I mean, it was like the only brand. I remember everybody wanted to work at Mac. Mac was the it girl of the cosmetic industry. But for me, I just feel like they have kind of lost their innovation. Just recently, they launched a collaboration with Sims, and it was the most odd, disappointing collaboration I think I had ever seen. The unit carton was the only thing that showed or featured the collaboration. The actual palette itself, there was nothing even remotely pertaining to Sims. The names of the shades, correct me if I'm wrong, now I am an avid player of Sims, still to this day, Sims 4... Let me hear those who love this game as well. There was there was no names to the shadows that even pertain to the game. I feel like it was just so messy and quickly thrown together. And I kind of feel like this about all of their collections, like their holiday collections, just kind of like the same repeat thing. They're gonna have some lipsticks, a skin finish, some eyeshadows. It's really not like anything new and all the shades are similar. I just feel like they've kind of lost the innovation. I would love to see them launch like a new new and improved, you know, Studio Fix foundation. Um, I know they've kind of reinvented the Fix Plus a few times, which there really is no wrong way. That is like arguably my favorite MAC product. I absolutely love Fix Plus. There really is nothing like it. It is one of my all-time favorite setting mists. It is so good. I mean, I know their lipstick line is like an OG lipstick. They have like every shade possible, but I just feel like they could jazz it up, reformulate, rebrand, repackage, just do something to add a little bit of a change and update a little bit of excitement to their lineup. There's so much more they could do. I mean, they're a retro brand. They've been around for a long time. I would love to see a retro throwback eyeshadow palette. If they've done this before, please excuse me. I personally haven't seen it, but I would love to see like, you know, a giant palette of their original OG shades, maybe um, a collection of their first few lipsticks that they ever launched or shades that they have discontinued and then brought back. Something like that. I mean, if they're not into totally reinventing themselves, dipping back into what they did best and what established them could be so fun. I would love to see something like that from MAC. Now let's move on to another brand. Let's talk KVD Beauty, formerly known as Kat Von D beauty. There is something about this brand overall that just isn't me. I don't know if it's like the packaging or the styling behind it. There is a product that to this day I still want to try because I've seen Jaclyn Hill use it. Tati used to use it a lot and that is her powder shade and light. Well not her. Kat Von D isn't associated with the brand anymore but I would like to try the KVD Beauty the powder contour the shade and light contour kit. The shades in there just look absolutely perfect. 
correct. I remember watching Jacqueline use it a lot in her tutorials. Robbie De Christi, I think, has used it a lot. Again, like I said, Tati. And the shades and the undertones just look like absolute perfection. And I love that it's a refillable palette. I think that is so cool. And that is just one product that has really drawn me in from KBD. A couple of the liquid lipsticks, I really do like the formula, but it kind of stops there. Their foundations always come off as like, overly matte or maybe somewhat drying. The highlighters are just kind of typically in those different types of shades. The eyeshadow palettes, I don't know, the collection of colors just never really speak to me. I know that there is a specific demographic and style that KBD caters to. It's just not for me. I don't know what it is. I feel like it's just uninspired. That's what I put here. The packaging is very literal. You know, because Kat Von D was, you know, tattoo and kind of gothic and stuff. I feel like it was just such a literal interpretation that it just almost felt obvious, if that makes any sense. Another brand to talk about is Makeup Revolution. Now, I have tried a ton ton of stuff from Makeup Revolution. I actually picked up the Nightmare Before Christmas collection that they launched just this past Halloween because the packaging was spot on. I mean, that collab, they totally nailed it, but the formula inside just fell short. Now, another collaboration they did shortly before this was their collaboration with the TV show Friends. This is by far in second place as far as disappointments behind the MAC collaboration with Sims. None of this made sense. Like the gloss shades that were lined up with Phoebe, Monica, and Rachel, I'm like so backwards. I don't know how they came to it. I feel like it was just like they took a random collection and just slapped the names of episodes and characters from the TV show all over the products and called it in and said, that's it. Stick a fork in it. It's done. This is it. Again, very literal just not quite there. I mean, it was kind of a fail. Now, a girl that I worked with at my last job, she was, I think, like a shipping or packing manager. I can't remember. Some management position at Ulta. And, you know, I asked her, I said, what is the most returned products that you see at Ulta? And she told me it was actually Makeup Revolution. And the biggest complaint was the inconsistencies in the formula, no color payoff, just just not quite there. I remember when they launched their concealer and everyone was like, oh, this is so totally a dupe for Tarte Shape Tape. It's better than Shape Tape. And they were just like all into it. People were just trying to stick it to Tarte with this cheaper <laughs> concealer. And to be honest with you, I tried it and womp womp, it was nowhere near Nowhere near. Couldn't even hold a candle to Tarte Shape Tape. I'm sorry, like it just, totally not. It creased. It did not offer anywhere near the coverage. As the product on its own, sure, I can see where someone would like it, but it is not. I'm sorry. To this day, I will fight that. I will fight that. That is not a dupe at all for Shape Tape. And before I forget, they almost kind of represent themselves as a knockoff brand. Not even like a dupe brand, but like knockoffs. Like the way that they would kind of copy certain products, for example, some of the chocolate bar palettes from Too Faced. I mean, it literally looks like a cheap knockoff. Like this is what I think I ordered from Wish and then this is what I get in the mail. <laughs> like it's like totally like that. Cue the TikTok music with the crappy flute playing. You guys know which one I'm talking about right now, but that is exactly what it reminds me of. It just looks cheap. I just haven't been impressed with anything from Makeup Revolution. Let's move on to another brand that is more high-end. Let's talk about Stila. And right here I have written down, what do they do again? <laughs> again, I don't mean this to be sarcastic or snarky. Well, maybe I do a little bit. I can't really think of much more from them other than their liquid metal and those like liquid glitter shadows that everyone freaked out about. And it's funny because I saw someone on TikTok say, these are products that you probably were influenced to buy that are just now hidden in a drawer somewhere. And yeah, it's true. I picked up the Stila Wanderlust liquid metal or liquid glitter eyeshadow because I saw uh, Kathleen Lights and Robbie DeCrissy rant and rave about it. Now don't get me wrong. It is beautiful and I really do like it, but I don't really reach for it or use it that often. And I don't even know why I don't because it is such an easy product to use. And I do think that it was a great product. I mean, at the time it was different and new and unique, but I can't really think of anything else from Stila that just really like screams 
Stila. And a lot of the times I've watched reviews of their products and they're really just not that impressive. I remember Tati reviewed some mousse foundation that they had that came in some jar and it actually pilled up on her face. And I remember her, I remember me thinking that it almost looked like, like an eraser. Like when you erase something on paper and you see all the little like eraser fragments all over, like that is the texture it was giving me. Like Ugh. So I don't know. I just haven't really been inspired to try their products. A lot of the reviews I see are not that positive. And they're just, again, another brand that I feel like just isn't like really releasing anything too excitive or excitive. Is that a word? Excitive and innovative. I, that's what I was mixing. Those two words. Here we are. Again, making up words here on the Crystal K Beauty YouTube channel. <laughs> Nothing excitive coming from that brand. I think they could be cool because they came out with the glitter shadows. Just kind of, they got to tweak that a bit. They got to work on it. Now, this is a brand that I wanted to be so excited for, and I felt like it just totally let me down. And that is House Laboratories or House Labs, the Lady Gaga's cosmetic brand. I will say I loved the liquid eyeliner. I did use it up. I finished it, but I don't use eyeliner that much, so I never really ended up purchasing it again. The lip glosses were okay. The liquid shadows, meh, they kind of creased a bit. Again, just not something that I reach for. Overall, I feel like it was just kind of a snooze fest, a little bit of a lullaby. Put me to sleep a little bit. For Lady Gaga, who is so eclectic and eccentric and different, I mean, the woman wore a meat dress to an award show. I mean, come on, you wore meat as a dress to an award show and you are serving me basic lip glosses, liquid shadows, and a black eyeliner. Come on, I know you got a little bit more inspiration buried in there inside of you. In fact, I know that you do. I wanna see that weirdness in the brand. I want gothic dark colors, things that are just unique and interesting and, and different and offers color and textures. I think that it could have been just a crazy standout brand that just kind of fell flat on its face and just didn't live up to what it could live up to. I mean, I like that there are, you know, wearable things in her collection. You need to have wearable items. You need to cater to different styles, different tastes. I get it, but I feel like it was almost muted just way too much. I just feel like the brand could have done so much more. Now let's talk about one size. Now this is Patrick Starr's brand. I don't know a ton about this brand, but speaking on the initial launch, kind of fell flat for me. You know, Patrick, again, is this very just extravagant, glamorous, over the top, just talented makeup artist. And for a brand to launch, that's supposed to be a makeup brand, to launch makeup wipes, which we all know are just complete crap for your skin. They're no good. They're bad for the environment. And a spray off aerosol makeup melting mist. Now, I think the makeup melting mist, that's pretty cool. Never really seen anything like that before. I think it's a pretty cool item. But again, for an initial launch, I just thought that this was kind of strange. And overall, from the products that the brand has released, it doesn't really excite me. Again, I have to say, I understand it's a newer brand. And, you know, we have to have those staple products. We're getting our toes wet. We're releasing some of the essential items. And I get that. I just, again, expected more. What I also thought was weird is I think recently he had he has launched a setting powder, which I remember his collaboration with MAC, which was Patrick's powder. And I'm like, is it the same type of formula? Because I remember people were obsessed with that powder. I wanted it too. It's limited edition. I don't think you can get it anymore. Is that weird to anyone else? Maybe it's just me. The reviews on the eyeshadow palette too were just not that great at all. And the way that he reviewed Selena Gomez's brand, Rare Beauty, and was like comparing it to his own the whole time was just so off-putting and weird. Eh, it's just one of those things that it kind of just leaves a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. I just don't really see myself purchasing anything from the brand unless it, you know, 
really introduces something that is just really like innovative and over the top. Now let's talk about brands that are doing it right. And I bet you can guess which brand I'm about to talk about. Let's talk ColourPop. Now, a lot of people say that they're over ColourPop. They're sick of all of the launches and that it's just not special anymore. And hey, I have been there before, but one thing I have come to realize is that it works. People, unfortunately, we live in a society that wants more and more and more fast, fast, fast. And ColourPop is delivering delivering that without compromising quality. And that is where they get it right. Their formulas are made right here in the United States. They're formulated in the United States. They are cruelty free. It's just, they, they have the whole concept correct. And you are getting fantastic products for an insanely cheap price. Now, if you do break down, for example, their price per ounce of their eyeshadows, it does kind of end up coming out to be more expensive than some of the other more expensive brands. However, how many of us are actually hitting pan on an entire eyeshadow palette? Let's be real, we're not. They're giving you enough product to where, in my mind, it justifies it. It doesn't have to have the same exact weight. I am getting something at an initial cheaper price, and that is what counts. Let's talk about their innovation. They have come out with some of the very best, most affordable complexion products. I absolutely love everything everything in the Pretty Fresh line. The Pretty Fresh High Coverage Foundation, which is also hydrating, which is something that we have all been looking for if you have dry skin, to have something that offers a high full coverage, but also being hydrating at the same time, they served it to us. Their Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer, beautiful product, absolutely love that. The Pretty Fresh Concealers, so good. Their eyeshadow formula is just, oh, chef's kiss. Next to none. Freaking amazing. I think I've only tried like a handful of ColourPop products that I didn't like. Literally. I have loved so much from them. Their cream gel liners, their lip liners, their luxe lipsticks, their luxe lip oils, glosses, just so many amazing, fun, incredible products that come in so many different colors. They just do it right. I'm a huge fan of the brand. Their stuff is just so good good, inspired. Packaging wise is fantastic. They're, they're just hitting it. They're hitting the nail on the head. They're doing so good. BH Cosmetics is another one right there with ColourPop. Incredible formulas for the price. For example, the Naughty Palette that they launched this past holiday. I mean, are you freaking pulling my leg? Are you joking me right now? That eyeshadow formula in that palette and really in any of their palettes, but that one specifically, blue me away, like blasted me out of this universe. I'm gone. Like I can't like the blendability, the intense metallics. There's like, there's just no, there's no excuse. There is no excuse for brands to really create anything less. If BH Cosmetics can do it and serve it to you at a price like that, miss me with anything else because I mean, come on. Now, what I do like about BH is that they do scatter their launches out a bit. They're not constantly pumping out, you know, releases. They're not selling out and then not bringing anything back. You know, these are kind of the things that you hear people talk about with ColourPop. I mean, I personally haven't ever really experienced anything bad with the brand personally, but I can see where some people can feel like that. I can sympathize with that. So that's where kind of BH comes in and they do it just a little bit different is still extremely innovative, on point, consistent formulas, beautiful brushes, like beautiful brushes. Um, a lot of their eyeshadow brushes I use religiously every single day. They're just doing it right. I absolutely love BH. I would say my dream collaboration would either be, you know, if I ever got to collab with a brand, it would definitely, you know, I would love to do a Too Faced. I would love to do BH Cosmetics and definitely ColourPop. Like that would be a total total dream for me, obsessed. Let's talk about Too Faced now. Hear me out on this. Again, I hear the complaints. I know some people don't support the brand. They don't like some of the stuff, but Too Faced knows who they are. They are consistent with their packaging. They are consistent with their formulas for the most part. It has an identity and they know how to work with it. 
I love the gingerbread spice and the pumpkin spice palettes. Um, amazing, amazing. Some of my all time favorite palettes. So good. I mean, they're easy to use. The packaging is adorable. I love the Born This Way line. I love the concealer. I love the foundation. Their highlighters are beautiful. So much from Too Faced is just solid and good. They know what they're doing. I personally love their mascaras, the BTS. One of my all-time favorites. It's in my rotation. Works so well for me. I just think that Too Faced is another brand that just gets it right. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your views are. What brands for you just don't excite you? Which ones do? Who are you absolutely loving right now? I know despite the fact that we're not really wearing a ton of makeup outside of the house, I know that I don't. Um, I don't like the feeling of makeup under a mask. Does anybody else feel that way? I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what the hell you said it with. I just don't like liquid product under a mask. It's just not for me. So generally, I just end up not wearing a ton of makeup when I'm out and about. It just doesn't happen. So despite all that, let me know what you're loving. What don't you love? What brands, you know, aren't doing it for you? What brands that are? I think I just repeated that like seven times. I apologize. I am rambling on. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.